Now, Terry, you've been monitoring what you call the breadbasket very closely for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. Speak us through your findings. Well, it's food price increases have tended to be at the lower level. Now, I'm talking about the basic um, groceries that people and who earn less than 3,000 Rand a month would buy. Millie meal, flour, cooking oil, sugar. Sugar, always sugar, because when you're really stuck, and anyone, if you go into the townships, will tell you, the standard thing is bread and sugar water. It's not very healthy, but at least it keeps you going because you've got the, the energy of the sugar and you've got the carbohydrate in the, in, in the bread. So I've monitored the standard thing since 2006, I think 2007. Same supermarket, one of the, the one that boasts that uh, they have the lowest prices, and they, they do. Same products, same time of the month, and I've watched it all the way through. Now, the other factor too, of course, is transport. Low-income low families spend about 50%, and most university studies have shown this, 50% of their disposable income on food and up to 30 or 40 percent on transport. Those are the two things. Transport has increased tremendously too with the fuel price increase. But in the food stakes, and those, that basic basket of goods, which five years ago cost 118 rand, and I figured how many cents, today costs 190 odd, a 65 percent increase. Well, if you go and look at even a domestic worker's salary, over five years has not increased by 65 percent. Farm workers only did recently because of a rather riotous behaviour in the Western Cape. Right, massive, massive strike actions. And suddenly, and don't forget, here we had a situation, and this is something that, again, I wish the people responsible would look at. The minister determines the wages for farm workers because then there's not enough union activity to, to uh, not enough union membership to negotiate. But the minister determines that in consultation with the majority unions, with Prasatu, they'd agreed to 69 rand a day. And then finally they've now got, they wanted 150, they've got 105, and it's going up uh, uh, CPI, that's inflation plus I think 1.5%, I can't remember offhand. The point, however, is that even at that level, just over 2,000 rand a month, is hardly adequate. And certainly not when you've got seasonal labor, which we have particularly in the Western Cape. So it's a massive problem. Now you wrote extensively on this issue on your website, terrybellwrites.com, and you can find the article there, A Ticking Time Bomb and a Badge of Poverty. That's what you've called social grants. But are you really calling... That was also on Fin24. And on Fin24. <laughs> but are you really calling for no social grants at all? No, 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 not at all. I'm saying you need a social welfare net. The real social welfare net is not provided by government. It's provided by workers in work. The majority of people earning a salary in this country who happen to be previ oh, previously disadvantaged, who happen to be black, um, support a vast number of unemployed people. The real social net, social welfare net in this country come from workers mainly unionized workers because they tend to be better paid, they support them. They provide that net. It is a net that should be provided for those who cannot work, who are disabled, yes, for pensioners, yes, let's have a proper pension, not 1,350 or 1,370 if you happen to be over 70. You get an extra 20 bucks in order to, I suppose, pay the doctor for all the bills when you're over 70. So insulting. I think it is. So therefore, I'm in favor of social grants. I'm in favor of good, proper, decent social grants. I want a living wage for all workers. And I would like to see social grants where they are necessary to be at a level of a living wage. To read Terry Bell's article, visit fin24.com and stay tuned to fin24.com for updates on labor. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.